Hey guys, it's Deanna and Mike. And today we're gonna talk about time-restricted feeding. In fact, two-hour feeding windows such as OMAD. Is it possible to get in enough calories, enough protein in a short feeding window, in a two-hour feeding window? Will it crash your metabolism? Mike, what are your thoughts? Well, obviously people have been doing this for a long time. You know, uh, you've been doing this for many, many months. Yeah. People have been talking about one meal a day for a long time. There was a, a, a clinical study that I highlighted on my Instagram that I can pop up right here in elderly women compared to young women. And they looked at uh, muscle protein synthesis, muscle retention. And look, people can get in enough energy and enough protein to meet their basal metabolic rate requirements in terms of energy and also to get the body enough protein, uh, especially for people that are physically active. So look, let's just pause though. Mm -hmm. Eating one meal a day is not for everyone. We're not saying this is the only thing to do. No. I don't eat one meal a day. I eat two meals a day, sometimes three depending upon my activity. Right. But Deanna has unique goals and you have unique goals. So the whole point of this channel is to give you information that you can then go and customize so as to meet your own health goals. I don't know what your former health history is. I don't know what your body composition is, your blood sugar regulation, your genetic predispositions. Your lifestyle. What is your lifestyle? What works for me may not work for you. We're just trying to help those that it may work for who have tried everything and nothing seems to work. Totally. And so Deanna is embarking on the one meal a day approach because we've talked about it in other videos, strong family history of cancer. Mm -hmm. We know that insulin and glucose uh, do are involved in neoplastic and cancer formation. We're not saying that one meal a day can cure cancer. No. We're just, she's just trying to <laughs> optimize, do everything she can in her power to keep her body's fat adapted mechanisms of mitochondria and right. so forth, insulin low. So right. that's what we're talking about today. But can you get in? Well, first of all, let's let's kind of dive into a common question. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm not eating enough calories, how would that affect my metabolism? Well, a, yeah, I mean that's a great question. Can you first of all get in enough calories in? And so, um, first of all, intuition, being intuitive with how much you eat is extremely important. Whether you have a longer feeding window or a short feeding window, which is why when I talk about OMAD, I talk about a two-hour window because it helps you do just that: having a larger meal, waiting 30 minutes, and then eating again if hungry. Okay. So it's very possible to get in enough calories in a short feeding window. Think about this. So you have per, uh, person A and person B. Person A is having three Weight Watcher shakes in a 12 hour period versus person B, myself, eating um, a large meal in a two hour feeding window with the same amount of calories. What's the difference? How is that so hard for people to understand that the only thing we're changing here is the time in which you feed your body and you have a longer fasting window, okay? So yes, to get in enough calories, macros will make a difference. Choosing proteins and fats rather than iceberg lettuce or a big bowl of veggies is probably gonna get you to a, a higher caloric standpoint than just vegetables alone, okay? So that's one way to get enough calories. So for me, I'm 120 pounds, 5'6", so I'm I'm a quite petite person. You're um, a man though, right? But I'm, just some YouTube but I'm a man, so if I intimidate you, gosh, you need to get in the gym. So um, I can easily get in, easily get in 1,300, probably 1,500 calories in a two hour window. If I can do it, I'm sure you can do it. How do I do it? I've built meal plans in the future book that we have coming on OMAD. I show you just how to do that, but let's just say, um, you have to focus on very nutrient dense foods, good sources of meat, micronutrient dense organ meats. Um, you're not focusing a lot on, on, on vegetables, even though vegetables are wonderful and they're great and they have a lot of phytonutrients, but you really want to focus on more of like a carnivore, keto carnivore approach, and then add in some vegetables optional. We love them because we have gardens um, and that will get you to the calories that you absolutely need. In the book, we also talk about surplus. You can actually go over your caloric requirements on OMAD, believe it or not. 
you can gain weight on OMAD if you really want to. It's very possible. So um, I wouldn't worry so much about losing too much weight uh, when going to a shorter feeding window. It really depends on your activity level, your goals, how much lean mass you have, how much fat mass you're trying to reduce. So right. it, again, we need to custom tailor all this. And, and one thing, I didn't want, want to interrupt you because Deanna was on the flow there. She's <laughs> 100 and 1,820 pounds, right? right? Yeah. Okay. As a female, she lifts hard. She's 43, not really trying to build that much muscle, probably trying to maintain what Just you maintain. have, maintain strength. Yeah. Look, if you're a 260 pound competitive power lifter, eating all the necessary calories to maintain your lifts and strength and muscle mass in one meal might be a little bit challenging. So again, this is where context matters, right? Mm -hmm. And then goals, right? Uh, so, Eating one meal a day has a lot of health advantages because you're making this metabolic switch to burning fat instead of sugar, right. to instead of promoting fat storage, you're promoting fat loss and all that, right? By be being able to go for prolonged periods of times without food, you're naturally getting into those fat stores, right? Now, right. if you're a competitive power lifter at 240 pounds, right, the goals are going to be different. You're not right. necessarily striving for optimal fat loss. Right. In the context of bodybuilding, strength, power, strong man, other sports, you can leverage your body weight to lift more weight. So again, I want you guys to think about, and gals, think about what your goals are. Why right. are you doing this? Is it, is, are you prioritizing health? If prioritizing health is your number one motive in getting healthy, then yeah, one meal a day is probably good. If you're trying to build a lot of mass and size and strength, is one meal a day ideal for everyone? Probably not. Or, you know, again, one meal a day meaning short, short feeding window. Compressing right? that. So um, there are days where I am flexible with that window, where it wouldn't be considered OMAD to some, but I'll go over to maybe three hours if I'm feeling hungry. I mean, it doesn't have to be black and white, okay? It's just um, a short- No, 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 you're either OMAD or not. <laughs> Come on. It's just like carnivore or keto or plant-based. I mean, do you really have to choose one or maybe just be flexible with it? I just find that a shorter feeding window in general fits my lifestyle so that I'm not eating a meal in the car all stressed out with high cortisol. I prefer to eat my calories when I'm sitting down and relaxed with my family and it gives me a lot more productivity time during the day. If you um, don't have those issues with productivity or um, you prefer to kind of graze socially or for whatever reason with work, so be it. If it works for you, wonderful. But we're finding that most people aren't liking they're not liking how they feel. They're not looking how they look. They're not feeling as resilient as they used to um, grazing on food like they did in their 20s and 30s. So this is why we're here to educate you on something new, guys. It's a tool, okay? This is not like witchcraft. This has been going on for years. Many cultures practice this, okay? One person on YouTube on our last video said, oh, OMAD's a thing. I mean, our whole country's been doing this for like ever. Um, so really, this is not like something that we're throwing out there to just scare you and create cortisol. This is something that can really change your life and help you if it's for you. And if not, don't do it. It's okay. All it's, right? it's really simple. But yeah. let's talk. So we have calories here. We're going to actually, there will be another follow up video on this video, but let's just kind of to summarize this. Mm -hmm. It, are there pros and cons to spreading your meals out in equal meals? Let's just say six equal meals versus one meal. The thing that you need to understand is gorging versus nibbling. Right. This is actually a title of a study. I think it was published in 2008. And so what they found is that when individuals evenly space out their meals, they're constantly thinking about food and have more perceived hunger throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing. And so you're more likely to keep consuming food. Where Whereas, you know, if you confine your feeding window to like Deanna's saying, whether you want to call it OMAD and keep it at two hours or three hours, whatever the heck it is, mm -hmm. when you're compressing that feeding window and eating during a, a really confined period of the day, studies have shown that the perceived hunger uh, cues and so forth are, are diminished in the sense that you're not constantly thinking about food and thinking about over consuming food and nibbling and all that. Right. So, so that's the thing. If you want, you know, a little bit more freedom, from food, you can try compressing your feeding window. If it's one meal a day, great. If it's two meals a day, if it's two hour window, four hour window, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. 
there's some benefit to that due to what we talked about in other videos, making this metabolic switch, mm -hmm. relying upon fat oxidation, ketone oxidation instead of sugar uh, oxidation. Not that sugar oxidation is necessarily bad all the time. And you want to take baby steps, you guys. We're not saying like if you've been a grazer for years, like 30 or 40 years, we're not saying like cold turkey start like a two hour window. It took me years to adapt to finally make the switch to OMAD. I was doing a four to six hour window for probably two to three years and fairly keto adapted, no autoimmune issues, very healthy. So I was in the right place to do it and I had the social support system. All of these factors make a big difference. So you have to evaluate your circumstances before making the commitment and be realistic with your goals and what you're honestly going to do. So it just fits our lifestyle socially, okay? And and our family isn't impacted because we all eat dinner together. So, you know, it works well for me. Yeah, and it could work for you too, based upon, you know, your workload, your life load. Yeah fitness goals and all that. So um, we'll address calories in a video part two for this, but if you enjoyed this content, if you liked Deanna's message and, and so forth, please hit that like button. You can follow Deanna over on Instagram, yeah. dr.dmuscle, and I'm at metabolic underscore Mike, and we do have a full e-course. It's only $27, but it really helps you understand meal prep mm -hmm. and blending fitness with a compressed feeding window because that helps to accelerate things, and including your body composition. So right. as always, friends, grateful that you're tuning in. I would love to know how compressing your feeding window is impacting your health, so please comment below and we'll mm -hmm. catch you on the next video.